Quiet, please. Speed. Twirling. Roll play back. One Direction had their record deal, but there was still a massive challenge ahead, which was making their first single and album. You know, when you're a kid, you don't think, oh, this is never going to happen. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to sing in the shower, I'm going to do that. But you never, you never expect to come out with a record deal and uh, end up recording an album. On the beat, innit? Yeah, have that feeling. Because now it sounds like you're driving the track as opposed to you just sitting on it. Sometimes I'll say for the microphone, I turn, I just smile a little bit, just think, you know, this is my job. This is actually what I do for a living now. And what I've always wanted. You know, a few, a few months ago, I was sat at this tiny little village doing a bit of work in the bakery, and, and now I was in a recording studio recording a song that, that could be our first single. Right now I'm looking at you and I can't believe you don't know. Oh, oh, you don't know you're beautiful. When we heard that song with our vocals, we were like, that's the one. There was no arguments between those five lads. Like, we knew straight away which one represented us the best and the most exciting and, you know, a little bit different. We're pretty proud of the album that we have and hopefully it goes on to do big things. So One Direction had recorded their first single and now they needed everyone to hear it. So this morning, live, Scott Mills, Radio 1, OK? This is the first time it's ever been played. This is a world exclusive. This is, this is where it all starts. Yeah, yeah. buddy! <laughs> it's like everyone's been so patient waiting for us and waiting for the record, so like now it's finally going out. I'm just hoping we meet the expectations we've set ourselves, really. Enjoy it, boys! Get in there! For the first time anywhere in the actual world, it's called What Makes You Beautiful. Here it is. Ah! You're insecure, don't know what for. You're turning heads when you yes, walk through the door. Oh, oh. As soon as it had been played on Radio 1, we travelled all over Britain trying to get all the stations to play on the One Direction! Woo! One Direction! And we had, you know, th thousands of fans waiting for us. Do you get mobbed all the time? Do you get the same crowd following you around? For me, promo was just a really exciting time. Oh my god, you did me! Day basis, you know, we do get that sort of reaction from girls and stuff, and that's phenomenal. And everywhere they went, the boys gave a live performance. Baby, you light up my world like nobody else. The way that you flip your hair gets me overwhelmed. But when you smile at the ground, it ain't hard to tell. You don't know. And play live as well. Come on. The day of our release, we went on a helicopter around Britain. 
We basically went from London to Glasgow, Glasgow to Manchester. We just, we flew everywhere, all over the country. <laughs> all the things that we get to do and the life that we get to have is just amazing. It's important that we, we never take that for granted and, you know, we're really lucky to be in the position we are and we feel really grateful. landed in Glasgow after that two and a half hour flight saying has not managed to wake up once. Still asleep and we've landed. That day I think for me was one of those moments of realization where We've released our first single. We're going round in a helicopter, being greeted by hundreds of fans at different places. We've queued up for hours and hours and hours. You know, it was about time we started giving back to the fans, going out and meeting them and saying, you know, thanks for waiting for, around for us. Here it is. We're here. At the first sight, there's so many people, there's like nearly a thousand people here, and we're going to sign in an hour and a half as many as we can. Thank you. Your heart will just turn around And as I walk up to your door My head turns to face the floor so Yeah, the fans are obviously a massive part of what we do and we do what we do for the fans. For all of us, we can't really get our head around it as such. It's, like it's the most flattering thing in the world. <laughs> I love Hattie Sales so much. I never thought I'd get so crazy over a band, but when they're there, you just get so worked up over them because they're amazing, they're like, they're perfect in every way possible. To have such a big effect on people's lives is, is so, is such a nice thing. Don't you know it's coming for the To know that you can kind of have such a massive effect on somebody's life is really overwhelming. The reason why the, the fans are so dedicated is because I think they feel like they can really relate to us. They're like we're the kind of boys that you go to school with, and that's because we are. For me, it's, it's a slow process, if you like, of dealing with girls screaming at me and telling me that they love me with tears rolling down their face. I've never seen anything like this before, and I've, obviously when I was going to school, I never had six, seven hundred girls screaming at me everywhere I went. Sometimes they, they go to mad lengths to, to get to see us and stuff. You know, we're very thankful for it and very grateful. <laughs> For some people, they feel like they're a part of what we're doing, and I think that they are. Without the fans, there's, there's, no, there's no reason to be One Direction. You know, if there's nobody supporting you, then there's no point. We're just talking about you. We're just the best fans in the world. Thank you.